Perfect. All right. Yay. So what was today? The 15th, I think, of September. Um, and so we are going to go over chapters six and seven. Um, what did everybody think of chapters six and seven? Was anybody able to get through them and read them okay? Oh, yeah. They were very insightful. Yeah. Good. Uh, I do already do a lot of these things that were mentioned in here about reframing and uh, positive attitude and all that. Good. Oh, I love to hear that. I definitely see that in you, Chuck. Yeah. Well, it's pretty obvious. <laughs> yeah. I like it. Well, I'm going to let, there's Donna. I'm going to let them get on really quick to our Zoom and then I'm going to pray and uh, we'll keep rolling on what we think. So I think that's Todd. Oh, no. Okay, well, let me pray really quick. All right, Heavenly Father, God, thank you so much for just bringing us together tonight. Um, it's just amazing what you do and how you work through us and how you speak through us. And um, God, I just pray that whatever you want us to learn from this book, that it, your Holy Spirit will just bring it in. And we just invite your Holy Spirit right into this Zoom and into each of our houses and just speak through us, God. Just be um, our mouthpiece. We give you that. And I just thank you for what we're going to do and what you're going to do tonight in the name of Jesus. Amen. amen. So, all right, well, let's review chapter six and I'm curious. Um, so last week we talked a lot about finding that verse and then kind of making that declaration over it. And then chapter six was really talking about kind of, um, like he says with a cow, I don't know if, in case any of you guys didn't get to read it, but how they chew their cud and how they try to get every nutrient out of it. It kind of comes up and down and up and down. Um, you know, that's, it's so important. It's the same thing as building that neural pathway in your brain. The more you do it, the more you think of it. Um, it's, it's just that way, but you, you can also do it in the opposite direction. So if you start to think about thought, like, like I had, um, so I told you guys that my father-in-law had, um, had cancer and he passed away last week and some thoughts came into my head, you know, and we're good. Cause he's, we know he's in heaven. So, um, it's, it's, uh, it's all right. But, um, some thoughts came into my head, like, well, well did he really like me? You know, we're stupid stuff. And I'm like, no, that's got to be right from the enemy. I know that's not me. And so I thought I can either think about it and try to make sense of that thought and try to understand that thought, or I could be like, eh, that's not worth my time and flick it out. And so this last week and a half, I've been flicking that thought out of my mind. And I don't even know where that thought's coming from, to be honest with you. And because my father-in-law was great, but um, it's amazing how I chose not to let it make a pathway in my head and I don't even think about it much anymore but I knew if I kept thinking about it or trying to understand it you know the why it would just mess with me and I thought ah, I don't need that in my life right now so um but it can work in the opposite way so this chapter is really talking about let's meditate on those verses did anybody get a verse or a declaration that they've been able to kind of do for that area that you guys are trying to work on small small problems to work on let's not get the huge ones yet but um uh i got one that uh i actually two of my i wrote down as the theologians 516 5 16 through 19 uh -huh. and it says rejoice always pray give thanks in all circumstances for this is god's will for you in christ jesus do not uh, do not uh, quench the spirit or quench the spirit. I'm sorry. Yeah, sure. No, that's okay. Yeah. Either. Yeah. And then I wrote Proverbs 7, 22, uh, a cheerful heart is a good medicine, but, but a crushed spirit dries up the bones. You guys know that a crushed spirit will dry up your bones. That's a true story. You don't want to do that. Yeah, I mean, I think we've all probably been through some stuff where we could have let it 
completely crush us. So, so Chuck, were you able to make some declarations with that? Uh, well, you don't mind sharing? Kind of, sort of, yeah. Uh, you know, I, my declarations is basically when I get up in the morning, I want to, mm -hmm. instead of seeing everything in the negative, try to see the positive and everything. Uh, uh, just like this morning, I had a lot of work to do at the church. Uh, mm -hmm. Not so fun work, but I had one job I had to do at the church that I enjoyed and I, had, I got to cut down a tree with my chainsaw and I love chainsaw. So, I mean, wow. that whole thing made my the whole job worth it, you know. <laughs> I love that, I love that. Yeah. Anybody else have um, any verses too that you want to share that's really kind of been impactful to help you kind of change and declare over your life? No. And that's okay if you don't want to speak up. So one verse that, you know, I've been kind of telling you guys, one of the things I really wanted to work on was kind of my edginess with this world and how crazy it's gotten and just everything. Um, and one of the verses I've really been kind of meditating on this week is Isaiah 55, eight through nine. And it says, my thoughts are not your thoughts, neither are your ways my ways, declares the Lord. As the heavens are higher than the earth, so are my ways higher than your ways and my thoughts higher than your thoughts. So my declaration is, you know, based off of that verse. And it's, you know, it's just, it's just like, God, you know, what's going on, everything that's happening you know, because you already know the future, you, you know, what's happening, you know, what's going to happen. It's not a mistake. Things don't happen by mistake. You make good out of bad, like Romans um, 8, 28. And that's the verse I've really been meditating on this week because I'm like, well, he knows what's going on. He's got it all under control. He's got it in his hands, you know, and that's my verse that has kind of helped me where I'm like, so so if you guys ever done a surprise party or something where you know everything that's going on, but the other person doesn't and they can't figure it out and they're kind of fighting you on some of the things or whatever. And you're like, no, I got it. Just relax and relax in it. And um, that's kind of how I kind of started to look at it. And so like the other night, somebody was asking me questions about my opinions and thoughts or however. And I was able to kind of look at this verse and be like, that might just be somebody asking a question, but I know the devil will use it to attack my, my edginess or my frame. And so I was able to look at it just a little bit different and be like, you know what? God knows what's going on. I may not, but he does. And so I don't have to be in control of the whole situation of the world. <laughs> you know, I'm just going to trust God that he knows and he is in control. And so that's kind of one of the things that's I really been working on for this study. Um, and it's actually given me a lot of peace. So it's, it's kind of cool. So that's where you want to just kind of do that repetitive repetitiveness. Um, and like I say, he'll repeat, he'll replace those old pathways. Um, like, and I've said this before, but instead of the wrong pathway that's in your brain that you keep coming to, instead of trying to, you know, cover it up. Don't worry about it. You put the new pathway in place and it'll just get grown over and you won't even notice it anymore. So. Just like he said in the book, uh, he knows the more, the more often that we think, think a thought, the more likely are, we are to believe it. Yep. And the more likely it is for us, for the lie to become a rut we get, get stuck in. So. Mm -hmm. Exactly. And I think, let's see, is it chapter seven or chapter, I should actually it might be in chapter eight. I know I jumped ahead, but somebody mentioned um, this quote, like one of our first times around. Oh, I'm not going to, I'm not going to find it. Hold on. Maybe I will, maybe I won't. Well, it's talking about um, the thoughts that you think. You know, you think of a thought, that thought becomes like a habit. 
and it will change the way you think, the things you do, it became habits. It can change your destiny, your whole, when I say destiny, your God given where he's taking you in life. And so your, your thoughts, you know, create such a pathway. It can actually control your destiny, your physical health, your, you know, where God wants you in life. And so it's super to kind of change them into that direction. All right. Um, one of the things I really like too is on page 103 towards the bottom, it says Satan is not very creative, but he's very repetitive. He knows if he tells you a lie often enough, you will eventually believe it. So how do you overcome his lies? You have to replace him with the old rut with a new pathway. The answer is repetition. You write it, you think it, you confess it until you believe it. What do you guys think about that when he says Satan is not very creative? I think we expect him to be, which mm -hmm. is what throws us off. Like he makes us think that he's creative and he's going to attack us from so many different ways. So we ignore the thing that's, you know, been hitting us over and over and over again. And so when we remember that, it's really easy to identify where he's coming from and, you know, the area that he's attacking you with. Exactly. Do any of you guys have like, you know, that like a hot button and you know, when that hot button gets pushed, it's a lot, it's hard for you to control it. And so the devil, okay, yeah, we all have our hot button kind of thing, whether it's a hot button or it's a button of rejection or, you know, however that button is. Okay. I, I see you guys. Um, the devil's not that creative. He knows he can come around and hit that button and hit that button. But when we do a new pathway, like say this is our button that he's trying to push, this mouse. If we actually go under it and instead cut the wires to this button by creating a new pathway, he can push it all he wants, but he's not going to get a reaction out of us because that's gr gotten grown over. It's not reactionable does that make sense unless we choose to really think those thoughts again we can have a new path that's over here and we can even have a thing that like if he pushes that button it makes us think oh my gosh i'm so thankful that god didn't do this stuff i know that's in a couple chapters coming up but you know it makes you think like like for, okay something for me um when i was younger you know mainly everybody has a middle school story you know a long time ago but um a lot of rejection, lots and lots of rejection. So, I mean, y'all know how rejection feels, right? And, um, you know, in my life, probably it was a speed bump for some people, but it seemed like a mountain to me. And I now look back at it and I've forgiven all those people. Um, I've been able to really work, kind of work through it. And I'm so thankful now that God took me through that because now I have so much more compassion for people that are invisible or not seen, rejected. Like it, it, you know, God turns my eye to those people because I, I don't want them to go through what I went through or, you know, however that is. And so I'm actually now very thankful. So even though the devil can push this button and push it and like, he can put thoughts in my head, like, oh, you know, your group of girls, they don't like you anymore. And he tries to push it, but there's nothing underneath it connecting that wire anymore because I now have a new pathway. I'm actually thankful for that rejection that happened. Sure, I can go back and start thinking about it and I can remember the hurt and pain, but, or I can think, you know what? I'm really thankful for that. And, you know, it pushes me to have to go reach out to people because, you know, if I don't reach out, you know, they may not reciprocate or however, and then you feel rejected. And so I feel like that pathway has gone really, you know, it, a neat way for me to where I've been able to, you know, be thankful for it. And the devil's not creative. He just, he likes to push it, push it, push it. Do you guys have any areas um, like Emily, do you have anything that is, you can talk about that he'll push and push and push and, um, you know, you don't have to get too private if you don't want, but that you're working on or have overcome. Yeah, um, I guess something is like inadequacy as well as like mixed with like rejection, you know, um, so I'm going through like a big healing process in my life and 
it's step by step and it takes time and it's, you can't rush it. So now I'm on that part. That I love that. Yeah. And you have to, and there's things from your past that comes up and there's so many things that like emotions and then like fears. And then with that, it can create like anxiety. And so, and then it gets stressed and then you become sick. And so it's like all of that, you know, throughout all of that, like the enemy and the devil at that point can pretty much just feed so much and make what you're trying to like get through like worse. Cause he's like, you know, he can, you can say anything really like you weren't enough at this point, or you should have said this, or you didn't do that. Or, you know, and it can come to the point where you're like, am I saying that to myself? Cause it's just so over yeah. and over. Well, or sure, if it's it, something you believe you might say it to yourself because the devil's gotten you to believe that, but is it true? Yeah. And then you question and you're like, no, no, like I did the right thing at that point in my life with what I had. And so you can't go back and be like, I should have, would have. And so, yeah, there's a lot of things that, and yeah, he's not creative. It's just that repetitiveness that like, it's like someone just knock on the door constantly and it just, it won't stop. And you're like, (laughs) sometimes just be like, okay, like stop. Like that's enough. I'm, you're just, you're done now. I'm not going to believe it. And then you have to flip it to where you say the truth about it. And then you say something that I am enough. I am deserving because God, and he sent his son to die on the cross for my son. And you have to like go through all these things that you can save, like scriptures that can just build you up and be like, no, I'm putting truth to cover all of that. And just to take it away because that's past, you know, like this is, this is present. This is where I'm at now. And so like anything that I went through, it was not going to be held against me. And so like, yeah, you really have to just cut all those lies out and just be like, no, like, yeah, like life's different now. And those aren't going to be like held over my head. And so, so yeah, I can yeah. relate. To them. Yes. You can. Yeah. I, I love that. That's, I mean, and that, you know, working on scripture gives you so much peace. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Does anybody else? have you know something too that I mean Trinity do you have something yeah so I think like definitely like my middle school slash maybe high school like story and that's not that long ago I'm a senior in college now was kind of just this idea that like nobody liked me um and it definitely was like elementary school too because I was like the awkward nerdy kid who was also violent so I didn't really have like a lot of ways to socialize with people um, which like created a lack of relationships because I was a violent kid that didn't know how to relate to anybody. And so that sort of like fact of the matter um, situation translated into like this, oh, nobody likes me, nobody likes me, nobody likes me sort of behavior and sadness that I felt. And there has just been so much redemption in that. And it's been so amazing because it's like, it doesn't matter if nobody likes me because I have a God who loves me deeply. And when I have a God who loves me deeply, he's going to bring people around me who are meant to be around me. Like he gets to be a, like my lover, but also like the provider of the community around me. And if you take somebody out of that community, it's probably for a purpose. And so um, I am actually a, event coordinator slash living in what's called the Women and Gender Resource Center at my on my campus. And I've turned this into like a little like hospitality ministry. Um, and that's just like my way of looking at what I'm doing on, on this campus community. And so we held a breakfast yesterday morning and I was like, oh my gosh, what if nobody shows up? Like nobody like it. And like that, just like that tinge, that button got pressed. But then I was like, wait a second, it doesn't matter. So I prayed about it. And I was like, God, let the people who need to be here, who need to feel up exactly. to like breakfast, come here. And we had so many people. I had to grab my kitchen chairs and add them to the tables that we had in our front yard that were holding chairs. And so there has just been so much success in that like part of my story because of God and because of his love for me. Exactly. But you had to choose, like you both, you and Emily both had to choose to believe the truth over the lie. And um, 
yeah, it's, it's challenging and you have to walk uphill and up that mountain to get to that, to actually start to believe it. Cause you know, I think, I think we all have some stories like that. Absolutely. I'm very, I'm, I'm so proud of you guys. <laughs> I'm, I'm, I'm I really appreciate everybody that's on this Zoom. And, you know, I just have to give a shout out to the people that watch it afterwards because I've had several people come and say I've not been able to make them, but I've been watching them and it's been so great for my heart. And so I want you guys to know, you may tell a story or give a testimony or something like that, but it may affect somebody else greatly to show them that God's power does work. God's truth does work. It can fight this kind of stuff. And so... Yeah. And so, but that's you constantly putting it in your brain, you know, what you believe, what you believe, you know, that truth. And so, you know, going back to it, you just, you can't let, you know, you just got to cut that right there, you know, so that the devil can't just keep pushing that button. I feel like that's about what he does. He likes to just push that button. So, and then the more you do it, like, like Trinity and Emily, what you're saying, um, the more you do it, all of a sudden something clicks from it becoming something you consciously have to do on a daily basis to remind yourself to where you believe it and it clicked and you don't have to consciously, it almost subconsciously happens for you a little bit. You may still have to consciously remind yourself to do, you know, over a little hump, but yeah, it's pretty cool. I'm proud of all you guys. Does anybody have questions or something that really hit them on chapter six? They were just like, wow. Craig, he's funny. All of his French and <laughs> likes to try to talk to people in French. And, so yeah. something that I thought was funny for me that I just realized was sometimes repetition really annoys me. Mm-hmm. And I hate watching videos. Like I hate watching movies over again. I hate like when a video for school just repeats itself in four different ways because I'm like, I got the point. And I've definitely noticed myself do this when a pastor is uh, talking about a Bible verse that I know. I'm like, okay, like I've heard Jeremiah 29, 11, eight bazillion times by now. Like, can't we, can you give me an original Bible verse? (laughs) (laughs) Yeah. And this uh, definitely made me think twice about that because I'm like, wait a second, like it's good to consider that Bible verse and chew it over again and listen to it again. And that is valuable. It's not about the repetition. It's about like meditating on God's word. That was nothing. Yeah. And he'll speak to you through that verse and show you more and more and more. Um, You know how um, last week and the week before we were talking a little bit about Paul and in Philippians and how he's like, I, you know, I'm, I, he's, he's in Rome and he's chained to a guard every eight hours. They put a new guard and a new guard and a new guard. Right. And he's like, you know, I, I was planning to preach the gospel. But I have a captive audience because every person that comes and gets chained to me, I get to. So I was talking to my dad and he's a big, you know, he likes to do Bible studies and teach and stuff like that. And he's actually working on Philippians right now with his um, Sunday school group or however. And he, he was telling me some commentaries from it and I haven't read it myself. He just told me this, but I thought it was really interesting. He said, when you look back at the Roman empire, he said, the word of God got spread inside the Roman empire first. And then it went out by the time it came to like a, another Roman emperor way up here, like not the one that Paul was at, But because he spread the word of God to every Roman soldier, the Roman soldiers all became Christians. And then by the time it was up here at like legacy wise, they declared Christianity as their religion of choice kind of in Rome kind of a thing. And so he was going there to preach the gospel to Rome, not realizing that by being chained to a guard and preaching the gospel to them, it went on the inside. He was wanting to go to the outside and he went inside and it, and so that's something my dad told me. I haven't read it myself, but I was, it's like, I just thought that was really cool. So just know that your ways are not his ways. <laughs> so, yeah. Cool. All right. Do you have anything, Donna? You're like, no. <laughs> 
All right. And Eric, if you have anything or Joyce, you just let us know for sure. So, all right. So chapter seven talked a lot about lenses and filters and kind of reframing a little bit. And I know a couple of you guys were able to watch that Craig Rochelle, but I want to share this video with you and we'll just watch a couple minutes of it. But um, it's on him talking about kind of these next couple chapters on changing your lens, reframing. And it was a visual I really wanted you guys to see. So I'm going to share my screen. Let me share my sound. All right. And if you guys can't hear it, please let me know. Let's Okay, I'm gonna start, it'll be just a few minutes. We won't watch the whole thing, so. I can't see your screen yet, Lori. I don't yeah. know if you shared it or not. Oh good, I was just gonna text you. Say that again. We can't see your screen. You can't see it? Okay. Well, let me try again. If I just share my sound, let me go right here. Okay, now tell me if you guys, can you see it? No. 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 Well, this isn't gonna work if you guys can't see it. I wonder why it's not sharing. Let me give it just another. Thing. If you can make a thought, share the sound. Uh, that's the only thing different. Okay, let me let me see if you can see it. If you can't see it, we'll just go on. Can anybody see that? No. Do no. you want me to try? Sure. Here's your I don't know if you would see it on my my screen. Do you want to send me the link and I can try to share it? Let me try. Here, let's see if I can share first. I'll like show you my paper. Um, can you see my paper? Yes. Yes. Okay, so then I should be able to share the video. I'm not so good at this thing yet. <laughs> Just drop a link in the chat and I'll play it. Let me see if I can do that really quick. Hold on one second. I just, I think it is just such a good um, taste. Okay, see if that'll work. Okay. It starts at like 907, I think. Can you all see that? Perfect. Yeah, take it to about nine minutes and seven seconds. Okay, let me turn up my volume all the way so everybody will be able to hear. Take this work. Well, and you're taking it. I don't mean we have to. Go on. I think you don't. The filter that matters is also the frame. You can be in the very same situation and how you frame something determines how you see it. And I want to give you a tool that I've worked with my counselor on that is called reframing. Let's adapt a tool called reframing. And I'm going to give you a simple definition of reframing. What does it mean to reframe a situation or reframe a relationship? Reframing is creating a different way of looking at a situation or relationship by changing its meaning. Is simply creating a different way of interpreting or looking at uh, a situation or a relationship by changing its meaning. And I'll give you an example of how you can reframe a day. Let's say you wake up and you determine ahead of time, this is going to be a bad day. If you frame a day like this, you can say very easily, this is going to be a hard day. I got so much to do today. I work with these people that drive me crazy today. I don't know how I'm gonna get it all done. I'm so overwhelmed, I'm so tired, life is hard, life is bad. Oh my gosh, what am I doing? My husband drives me crazy, these kids. Why do we have all these kids? I'm sick of my stupid car, I hate the people I work with, I hate my job. The very same day, you could have a bad day if you frame it the wrong way. 
If instead you take the exact, exact same situation and you reframe it, you may wake up and say, oh, I've got a lot going today, but I'm so thankful my God is with me. I'm thankful that he's for me. I'm thankful he's given me a job. I'm thankful for my own clunker that gets me to this job. Even though some people drive me crazy at work, I'm actually thankful for them because they're pretty good people. I believe today's going to be a good day. We're going to grind it out. We're going to get a lot done. It's not the facts that change, but it's how you frame it. I'm afraid that there are so many people that start to frame even God by saying, I don't like what's going on, God, rather than looking for the goodness of God in the day. It's not just the facts that are different. It's often the filter or it's often the frame. And what do we know about what goes on in life? You can't control what happens to you, but you can control how you frame it. You can't control what happens to you, but the good news is you can control how you frame it. What All I right, we'll pause it right there. Eternity. Eternity. What did, what did you guys think of that? I appreciate you sharing that. I loved it myself. I watched that whole thing and watched it twice. Yeah, yeah. Because I, I pretty much live my life by what he is saying. Almost to the T. Uh, I try to be on the positive all the time, not on the negative. You know, and it changes it. the way you look at life every day. You know, uh, you know, you always have your moments when you have negative negativity fall into your life, but to turn it around and look at it positive way is the thing. You know, oh, I'm going to have a good day today. You know, even though you know you're going to have a hard day, you can. I'm going to have a good day, which makes it even a better day. Again, you don't think about having a hard day. Yeah. And I, I feel like I tend to be naturally negative or see the negative. Like I'm always at what if, what if, prevent defense. You know, I look at all the details. And so for me, I have to really train myself to be positive on a day and choose to look at the positivity of it. Does anybody else kind of feel that way? Like they really have to. Yes, I do. Training? Yeah. Yeah, I do. Donna, I see you. Yeah, yeah. What do you think? What did you think about that video, Donna? Are you talking to me? Uh-huh, yeah. Um, like, I didn't know if the other Donna was there. Now you're, you're the Donna. Donna's uh, okay. <laughs> I uh, I just have to remind myself that God loves me and not everything is negative. And he, he wouldn't look at things negatively, so... You kind of have to, to work in this world at it to be positive. I work in law enforcement, and that's the worst negative occupation I think you could have. Yeah, because you see a lot of negative. It's, yeah, and it's always everybody else's fault. So you get hardened. So you have to kind of really think about the positives and the, gay, the way God wants us to live our lives. Yeah. Yeah. Wow. That's, that's really good. That's really good. I really liked how in this chapter, he switched it from lies versus truth to uh -huh. now all of it might be truth, but you have the positive and the negative and it just depends on how you're looking at it. Um, so it's kind of cool how we've, you know, I feel like we've graduated from the lie versus the truth to now mm -hmm. really figuring out how to solidify that truth um, in the way that God wants us to see it. I agree. I do too. Mm -hmm. Yeah. One of the lines he put in the book, I really, really love. I, and that is, you cannot defeat an enemy you cannot define Yes, that's true. And, you know, and sometimes defining it might be kind of just saying, like, you know, like I was saying, I was thinking that, you know, those thoughts that were coming in my head the last week or two, and I'm like, instead of pondering on it and defining it, I could quickly see, no, that's a lie. And I don't even need to, you know, it's like I was able to quickly define that it was a lie. So some things you do have to go down and define it you know and um 
kind of identify the situation so then you can look and see if it's a lie or not a lie. And I was able to identify right away, yeah, it's a lie. Yeah. And so I can just swipe it out of my way constantly. But on page 121, I really liked how he was saying, we got to control our thoughts and overcome our cognitive bias. You know, by first at the top of page 121, stay calm. If you react, you're probably going to react the way you've always reacted. Um, identify that situation, Chuck, which we were kind of talking about. What exactly and truly is it happening? You know, identify your automatic thoughts. How, how are you framing it? Are you framing it from the frame of this hurt over here? Like maybe you have a lot of different frames in your life. And, you know, my frame of rejection, I can just pull in and, and see something and be like, oh, I think that person's rejecting me. Like there was a great story he wrote in here at the very beginning of the chapter. And it said, um, Imagine you go to a party with a friend, and this is page 116. Just before you both walk into the house, your friend grabs you, looks you in the eyes and says, you do not know that every, did you, let's see, you do know that everybody at this party thinks you're an idiot, right? For reals. All right, let's go. That gave the frame of feeling like he's an idiot and everybody thinks he's an idiot, right? So now he has this frame around him and his filter is that frame. Same like what I was saying, if I had that rejection frame on, I could easily see somebody doing something not intentional, but I take it as rejection when it, that was not what they meant it to be kind of a thing. One so, thing you have to remember, what? Is, one thing you have to remember is you can control how you perceive it. Mm -hmm. It's all in between your ears. Exactly. You know. Have you guys Great ever, yeah. Have you ever talked to a couple people and one person takes what you were saying correctly and the other person takes it wrong. Yes. Yeah. And they, yeah, they, it's frustrating because your intention may have been good, but the person, because of their frame and the way they looked at it, took it completely wrong. And so, you know, my thought is, is you can have a lot of frames. What frame are you going to use today? Are you going to be in the clouds and dark and dreary? Or are you going to be in the sunlight and thankful that God gave you another day, you know, on this earth. And what is he going to use you for today? You know? Uh, and then of course, find the objective supportive evidence on page 121. You want to deal with the reality and search for objective data based such, you know, what you're thinking on. Um, is it real? Is it not? You know, are you going to base it on Christ? Or are you going to base it on Satan pushing your button again in that respect? What? Did you guys have any highlights in this chapter that you were just like, this really hit me in this book that you may have? I bet Chuck probably has a whole chapter highlighted, but that's just my guess. <laughs> yeah, I do a lot of highlighting. <laughs> I do too. <laughs> my book's a mess. <laughs> Emily, did you have anything that you were just like, wow, this really hit me in this chapter by chance? Or if you were able to read it? Yeah, I did read it. Um... I highlighted a few things. It was just saying like, um, it was saying something about there's a problem. It was saying being in control is an illusion. So I highlighted that because <laughs> I have this like quote that I kind of made up and I was like, the only thing I can control is my outfit, you know? And then everything else around me is not in my control. You know, I have to, remember that like you gotta let go and you know because God's in control so that's I highlighted that so I was like yeah it because you can just try to control everything you know down to the little littlest of things like and that's what he was talking about in the beginning of the book about like how controlling he was he was like I don't care if it's somebody else's car I'm driving you know yeah. <laughs> like that and I'm not at all like that but um that's really good yeah, I liked that. I was like, oh, that, yeah, because then when you really think about it, it hits you and you're like, well, yeah, I, I can control what we eat for dinner, you know, and like things like that. But kind of like what you said, you know, the only thing you're truly in control of is your reaction. Yeah. To what could happen to you? You may not be in control of what happens to you. you know? I thought that was really good. Well, and how you process it and how you're thinking it, because you can just sit there and start 
pulling out all the negatives out of every little angle when really the big picture is just it was in God's control and everything was okay and that what was happened what happened and you can sit there and I don't know dwell I guess dwell on it and sit yeah in that dark cloud and that dark cloud just follows you mm-hmm. like wherever you go yeah um, Eric, you're down here at the bottom of our screen. I know you're muted, but did you have anything? And, you know, if you don't, that's okay. But did you have anything in this chapter that really hit you by chance? He might be kind of on and off, but if you do, let us know, because I just feel like you might have some, some, something good in there. How about Joyce? Has Joyce um, did anything in this chapter that you may have highlighted, you know, just like, wow, stand out at you or the last chapter? Well, about reframing. Mm -hmm. Um, 123, it talks about reframing your past and pre-faming your future will change your life. I thought, well, pre-faming your future, I kind of didn't really, maybe had some questions about understanding that completely, but (laughs) I don't know. What do you think? He meant. You know, I think like tomorrow, my day, I don't have a conference thing. I do a lot of conferences with my work, with my um, nurses. Um, tomorrow, I have a day that I can just get ready. And so I'm going to frame my day as, you know, I want to run in the morning and I want to, I want to just spend some time with God in the morning. And I want to frame it to where I may not be able to get all the work done that I want to do, but I'm going to have a great day and God's going to allow so I'm like framing what tomorrow may be like. I'm okay. Frame how I choose, how God chooses. I may not know what his will is for me tomorrow, but you know what? I'm going to trust him and what he, what do you, what do you guys think? Do you think that's similar to pre-framing? Yes. What do you think? So back and enjoy the sun. Oh, I don't know if she can hear me. Yeah. Anybody have a thought on that? pre-framing your future? I think part of that also ties into creating that new rut of truth as well. By doing that, we're already prone to thinking the truth and knowing the truth. So that's a way of pre-framing how we're going to act in that next situation or how we're going to view that next situation. Exactly. Yeah. Eric, I saw you went off on mute. Can you see Can you hear me? I can. I can. Okay. I'm sort of new to this whole Zoom thing. That's and all I'm right. Doing, That's I'm okay. doing, and I'm doing a few things at once. I apologize. Not I guess a problem. I, what I wanted to, um, you know, in regards to reframing, and I've, I've been on the call all along. Yeah. Yeah, I know. Yeah. I, I think that, you know, for me, I am, I'm admittedly, still looking at some of the ruts that, uh, you know, my thinking has caused, you know, and I wasn't on last week, but as I, identify, as I identify these ruts that have formed in my life and I continue to, to follow these ruts, and I really enjoyed that analogy. <clears throat> it's really given me several areas where I can look at to reframe the way I think. And Mm-hmm. You know, I don't have anything major, but what I am realizing is that identifying those ruts and those thought p- patterns for me is going to be uh, a lot of fun, to be honest with you, and breaking them down into chunks that I can actually put together a reframing yeah. process. Um, like I'm just not quite there yet, but this has been very helpful so far. But so far, yeah, yeah, exactly. In fact, I'm kind of, I don't know, I'm really not that like a certain person kind of like, you know, come on, you know, but I'm kind of like with what God's giving me with my edginess, with the world just being crazy right now. Um, I feel like, which I'm going to take that away. It's not crazy. It's, it's God's purpose and what he's doing. He's mixing it all up, you know, maybe it's, it's a flood, you know, the flood season, but um I think uh, one of the things he's showing me is, you know, if you keep on that verse that I know what's going on, I know my, I know, you know, your ways are not my ways, my ways, you know, I think my, my ways are higher than your ways. 
And it's kind of like, I'm like, okay, bring it on. I'm ready. I'm ready to have somebody come or talk or give their opinions that are just pissed or whatever. And I'm going to like focus on that verse and be like, you can have your thoughts. I'm going to, I'm just going to listen. And you know, however, this goes, God, I know you got it under control, you know, and I don't have to try to control the whole world. And so, um, yeah, I'm kind of like, okay, bring it on. Let's give this, let's give this sucker a whirl. <laughs> and I'm not normally like that, but I'm kind of like, mm, I'm ready to fight. Yeah. A little bit. It's, it's kind of funny, but <laughs> that's me. So then, well, Lori, I think yeah, what's uh -huh. really helpful about this book to your point is that it gives you such a good opportunity to get it, put together a fight plan. Mm-hmm. And, you know, that, you know, based on scripture, based on revelation, based on what the Holy Spirit might tell you at that very moment. But, you know, it's such a process. And this book has uh, opened up a whole bunch of doors. I wish we could get together in about six weeks and recircle because I'll be done then. <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly. I know. Yeah. Um, I know. I, I was telling Caitlin, I'm I love that book, Dress to Kill. It's a really on the armor of God and it has a lot of spiritual warfare in it. So um, if you haven't taken spiritual warfare 1.0, I would do that class first. But, um, you know, I'm, I don't know I'm, I'm ready to not let the enemy have control of my, my brain anymore. You know, I want to look at things differently and felt like I had good control and then I coasted. Have you guys done that before? And then you have to... Huh? <laughs> I'm like some of you guys are like, yep, yeah, absolutely, absolutely. Or you think you're in control? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so the next couple chapters, we're not we're not quite done, but the next couple chapters have a lot to do with freeze frame reframing a little bit more and kind of looking at that collateral goodness, like what God didn't do. I don't know if you guys have ever heard that song by um what was that country western singer's name garth brooks i think it was by him but it was kind of one of those things where um he was thanking god for what didn't happen in his life um gosh i can't even remember that song. huh unanswered prayers unanswered prayers yeah yeah and it's kind of an interesting on um, those two chapters coming up and so i'm excited to kind of read those ones as well but i'm ready to just get this on got on okay so what i was going to ask you guys is do you see why it is so important to constantly fill with um the word of god you know it's you know you can just pick a psalms or something like that and read it over and over and over for the week like pick one and go for it but if you're constantly filling up with the word of god every day um he's going to show you new things to put in your arsenal you know you're putting this belt of truth on and that's where you're going to get that power to fight, that power to disconnect the, the button so the devil can't push it anymore, you know, as you look at it and read it. And, you know, even if it's small things, don't feel like you have to read the whole Bible tomorrow and fill it all up. No, just do small parts if you need to. And then just, you know, um, what's that called that he said to um, meditate on or, uh, sorry. To ruminate <laughs> it's meditate but ruminate you know like the cow <laughs> get every piece of nutrition out of it like sometimes i'll just focus on one verse for like a week or two and just read it over and over and over again read it in different versions but that is where it's going to help you find what you need to then make those declarations because this is going to reroute in your brain a truth um have you guys ever done that before everybody's different and everybody likes to read and get knowledge their way. So you need to do what you were created to do and the way you do it is how I believe. But, um, for me, that, that is one of the things that's made a big difference. Um, so I think for myself, like I, okay. When I say I read the Bible every morning, I mean, sometimes I fail. Um, so it's not every morning, but it's close to every morning and that's my goal. Um, but recently I had like supplemented some of my Bible reading uh, with a book and mm -hmm. it's called uh, The Gospel Comes with a House Key. Um, and it's 
Okay, hold up. I, I need to show you this book. <laughs> Thank you. I love uh, it. Well, while she's looking for the book, I want you guys to know that when you have Christian music on, a lot of those Christian music stations are actually based on the word of God. So even when you're listening to Christian music, you're getting the word of God in you because a lot of them are based off of verses from the word of God. And so, you know, just constantly having that come in versus other forms too, as well. Trinity, when you come back, I'll just see. Oh, you found it? No, I didn't. But it's okay. called the, the Gospel Comes with the House Key. And it's by this um, woman who was basically like a super, super far left um, lesbian uh, college professor. Mm -hmm. And now she has become like a very conservative, like she has very conservative Christian um, beliefs. But it, her book is all about this idea of radically ordinary hospitality and about being a good neighbor um, to people within the Christian community, but also towards like your physical neighbors and your neighborhood and anybody around you and building like positive relationships with people that aren't believers in order to draw them in your house and just like respecting them and sharing the gospel. And it's an amazing, amazing book. And Gloria, you would really like it because you've talked about how like crazy it is watching the world go to like craziness yeah um, that's the atmosphere I'm in right now because I'm on a very liberal college campus yes so <laughs> I started reading it and it was just about like opening your like heart to other people and inviting people in and having sort of like an open door policy in your home and so as I've been reading this like I've noticed like God putting things on my heart and God putting me in certain positions to be, to have an open house. So like we got a call like two days ago and they're like, somebody needs to use your, their safe room because they're living in their car right now because their roommate is not a safe option to live with. And there was like some crazy stories and they ended up finding somewhere else, but it was like in that two hours, we got like our whole room together and I just like felt something in me and I was like, oh my gosh, I love this. And I have a passion for this and I enjoy this. And I know that God is like putting this on my heart. And so it's so cool to see how like my daily reading actually influenced the life I live that exists outside of that reading. Exactly. And being God-based. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. Oh, that's, that's really cool. I like hearing that Trinity, you know, and I mean, honestly, I like to, you know, pick on all you guys, because I really love hearing what each and every one of you guys has to say, because each of us are different. We have different frames, you know, and, you know, just hearing from you guys, you know, like Donna, you, you have that frame, that perspective through um, the police officer, you know, the force, you know, and that's a hard frame to carry. Um, and so, you know, but if that's something God has purposed you with, um, it's, you know, that's, he will equip you, you know, in that as well, which is really cool. You know? And so I'm, I'm proud of you. That's cool. I mean, you know, even listening to Emily's story and Chuck's story, you know, you know, Eric's story, you guys all do have incredible things to say um, as we're reading this book. And I just want to thank you guys for sharing. And I think people that aren't here live with us that watch it later also get a lot of out of what you guys are saying. So I think it's pretty darn cool. Yeah. Trinity put that book in the chat, by the way. Um, if anybody needs to catch that book. So it sounds like a great book. So does anybody else have anything um, that hit them um, for tonight? I want to keep a close eye on the time and be respectful of everybody's time. But oh, I just think the world of all of you guys. So, well, listen, let's um, for sure do, let's see, we did chapter six and seven. Let's um, do chapters eight and nine for next week. Does that sound good? And like I say, if, if for some reason you're not able to read it, still feel free to come or watch it afterwards. And um, you can still get stuff out of it, even if you don't have a chance to read it. I like to try to go over it with everybody and 
you know, kind of see what your highlights are and stuff like that. So, well, awesome. So there you is. Know, and all the time uh, we've told, we've been told that God loves us and we matter and things like that. When you really, really think about it, sometimes we take that for granted and we don't think about it. But that's one thing that popped out for me was I matter to God. And that meant, I mean, that was like a major, gives me goosebumps, but. You do. You absolutely do. You know, something that's hit me this week is God is omnipotent. He's everywhere. Because I was in such need of him this last week and a half. And I'm like watching on the news just a little bit with, I guess, they're having another hurricane in Louisiana or something like that. I don't know. I kind of occasionally catch news. And um, I'm just like, God, I know all those people are yelling out for you for help. And people around me are. And yet you are still like in the midst of everything. And I'm so grateful that he's not human you know, and can only focus on one thing. He's omnipotent and he's everywhere. And we all can, you know, ask for his help, which is super cool. But yeah, yeah, you care. He cares about us all deeply in our own individual ways. Yes. Uh -huh. I didn't even have like that. I like that. All right, you guys, well, let me pray over you all. Um, Holy Father, God, thank you so much for today, for our conversation, the words that are just spoken out of all these amazing people on this um, Bible study is just, it just blows my mind and I'm so grateful for them. And God, I just pray for each and every one of them and the frames that they have in their life and the perceptions that they carry and going in to their works and their lives and their jobs and, and um, everything. God, I ask that they'll be able to start reframing and carrying your frame and the way you want it framed, the way you see it. And God, I ask that you will just show us through your eyes, through your glasses, the way you see the situation and a lot of things. And just help us to keep digging those trenches of truth in our brain, God, those um, neural pathways that will just um, trace on that side faster than the lies will. And I just praise you for everything you're doing. In the name of Jesus. Amen. Amen. All right, you guys, we'll see you next week. So good to see everybody.